What's up everyone, Alex here. Ever since I finished First Spoken, I've been thinking a lot about it, particularly the conversation surrounding this game, the reviews, and everything else that came out when it launched. So I wanted to take this time to share some thoughts about the game that have just been rattling around my brain for the past few weeks. And I want to be clear here, I'm not making this video to try to convince you to play Forspoken. These are just some things that I wanted to talk about and not even a real judgment or review. If anything, this video is really about how a game, like Forspoken, can have a lot of nuance that simply cannot be summed up by memeing it, or picking it apart by its individual pieces and reductively calling it single words or phrases, or heck, even reviewing it. Some games are just larger than the product you're getting out of the box, in a manner of speaking, which are things that I wanted to capture in this video. As such, this may show a more critical perspective than my other videos, but I hope that the topics brought up here can lead to further discussions in the comments. With that in mind, let's begin. When I played the first spoken demo back in December, I didn't have a lot of good things to say about it. And because everyone else had already voiced their own opinions about it, I didn't feel the need to add fuel to the fire. Instead, this made me take a step back to analyze why this demo just didn't click with many people. And after playing through the full game, I instantly knew why. This might sound obvious to a few people, but open world games don't demo well. And when they do, they're usually set close to the beginning of the game, like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Forspoken's demo is set seemingly midway through the main storyline, and by this point, you've been given a set of tools to use with no proper way to onboard you. Onboarding is key in games with new concepts, and while many character action game fans have found much nuance to its combat, thanks to the genre's way of encouraging experimentation and the like, the rest of us saw a game that seemed plain Jane when compared to others. The full game, on the other hand, eases you into the combat and explains the tools way better, allowing players to play around with their weapons and then ramping up encounters to test your comprehension. None of that was present in the demo. One of the main reasons why I don't review games based on their price points is that price is a relative value proposition. What this means is that whether or not a game's price is worth it differs dramatically from person to person. And having chatted with many of you here in the community, I know that a good portion of you wait for sales to happen. Because let's face it, gaming is an expensive hobby. That said, what muddies the conversation surrounding Forspoken's value are two things. Its initial price point and the perception of quality brought upon by the demo I've just discussed. I've already talked about the demo, so let's focus on the price point. As you all know, several publishers have been pushing this agenda of $70 games since this generation started, and while many high-profile games have embraced this price, the companies making these decisions have not given us a good reason why games should be priced this way. Some of us have heard companies say that video game development is expensive, while they brag on about how their horses are able to defecate realistically, which doesn't help their argument at all. Moreover, the reality is that we just don't care as much about game development as companies think. And to be honest, while I will acknowledge that many of us have gone on to pay full price for Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart and God of War Ragnarok on PS5, and of course have pre-ordered The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, all at the $70 price point, the rest of us are still unconvinced of this value proposition. So why is Forspoken $70? I honestly don't know myself, but this isn't just a Forspoken problem, so the industry has to really justify this price point moving forward. Have you seen the memes of people making really weird faces and laughing at them? Chances are, those were taken completely out of context, maybe even paused during some footage while they were merely yawning or blinking oddly. I've seen all the clips from Forspoken on the internet saying how the story is cringe and its characters unrealistic, blah blah blah, but the reality of it all is that Frey is actually quite a relatable character. No thanks to the demo, see a pattern here? We had zero context as to what Frey is, so let me give you the cliff notes. 
Yes, Frey was transported into the world of Athia and obtained magical powers and parkour and whatnot, but what is glossed over is the fact that she's a young homeless person who's trapped between a rock and a hard place. Despite attempting to live a normal life, she gets dealt a lot of bad hands over the years, and I've been there, especially when I had no place to call home. There's no worse feeling than trying to sleep on a rickety bed filled with lice and other insects, despite your best efforts cleaning and scratching yourself all over because you're this evening's buffet, all the while trying to get a good night's rest. It's a feeling that I don't wish for any of you to experience, ever. And I'll be the first to admit that Frey has got a rebellious streak in her. But consider the people who say that they care about her. That judge in the beginning, while offering to help her out, would much rather do so at arm's length, which doesn't endear Frey to accept said assistance. And there's also Frey's pride too, the fact that she's gotten through this far all by herself. So why even accept help now of all times? One comment by a fan mentioned that Forspoken leans more towards a pre-2010s take on the isekai genre, and any of you who have followed this type of storytelling will know that this is less about quote-unquote audience fulfillment and more about transporting the character to a new setting that reflects back on their character, in other words, their true nature, and to help them grow as a person while making a difference in a brand new world. Yeah, it's tropey, but I've always thought that it's what you do with these tropes that matters more than just reducing it to a few words. And for anyone says, why can't we have both? Well, I've got news for you. Even the great Warren Spector, the man responsible for Deus Ex, one of the most highly regarded games of all time, said that video games don't need to be fun. Think about that for a second. The only downside to me is that the main story is pretty short. But beyond finishing the main story, I've actually found myself spending more time exploring the world despite the end. I've played my fair share of open world games over the past few years, from Far Cry, Horizon, and even the latest Assassin's Creed games. Over time, however, I felt that these games started designing their worlds around the checklist in order to provide players with something to do, a type of perception of value that tricks you into thinking that partaking in hundreds of different minutia is somehow tantamount to a quality experience. Newsflash, it's not. For me, however, the best open world games inspire awe and imagination by way of its surroundings. Imagine the first time you looked out from atop a mountain in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, seeing a tower in the distance and then saying, I want to go there, or the same feelings that were evoked when you looked out upon the Wild West in Red Dead Redemption. These are the kind of feelings that I get while exploring the world of Athia. And mind, I'm not even saying that Forspoken is somehow devoid of the checklists that I mentioned before. The difference here is that I want to check things out on my own, separate from the myriad of icons and things to do. I recall a moment in Forspoken when I saw a shrine atop a massive plateau and trying to find a way up, only to discover that I probably didn't have the necessary traversal abilities to climb on top of it. This potentially made me even more excited by the possibilities, which further galvanized my mission of exploring every nook and cranny. And yet despite the criticisms of the world being desolate, boring, and devoid of all life, I actually think that these were what made Athia so much more compelling to me to begin with. This is a land ravaged by corruption that's got people banding together to try to live their best life. See a parallel there? And succumbing to maltreatment by rulers that stopped caring about their land. The ruins scattered about serve as proof of this divine malfeasance. And besides, Seeing people in open world games doing weird things like lighting themselves on fire isn't really something that pulls me into the game. And in a way, I'm glad that Forspoken minimizes my exposure by just having one big town. In Athea's wilderness, I'm able to run fast, roam free, explore massive expanses, and do whatever heck I want. And that's freaking awesome. And what's really cool too is that for the people who tried to really learn Forspoken's combat, they have espoused the values of its design. And to dig on the demo again, honestly, I don't even know why they thought that it was a good way to get people on board. But when I finally learned how the pieces fell in place and started playing at a harder difficulty, 
that's when I fell in love. Unlike many other open world games, Forspoken's combat is a blend of magic and parkour in all of the best ways. To put it in another way, its combat is really all about crowd control more than anything, and much like the best character action games, you can use these abilities in any way you see fit. Yeah, you can stick to your shooty shooty lightning ability to keep enemies at bay, but it's the far riskier abilities that encourage you to be in the thick of combat that reward you big time. The gameplay you've been watching in this video which we're taking during my first hours playing the game, isn't really going to convince you. But there are plenty others who are far better than this than I am that really showcase the powerful things you can do in Forspoken. Like this amazing clip from Boomstick Gaming. So these are the five thoughts that have been lingering in my head since I started playing Forspoken. Now I want to leave this video here as a marker in time as a demonstration of how opinions of gaming are shifting at a rapid pace, and it's up to us to either be swept up by all the miasma surrounding us or choose to stand our ground. And while some will say that we're a product of the world around us, much like how Frey altered her perception of the world around her and became a better person, I have faith that we all can do something just as magical for ourselves. Thank you very much for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.